What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of Debo Samuel's route running. We're going to be talking about how to run an out route versus press when he's a little bit outside leverage, how to run a square cut, what's the purpose behind attacking leverage, and then how to run a whip route, okay? So I think this video will give you guys a lot of value, help you out with some of the routes that you're going to have to commonly run, okay? And guys, if you're a receiver and you want me to take a look at your route running, you want me to break it down just like how I break down film on my YouTube channel, on my Instagram page, and pretty much all social media, check out that link in the description that says submit your film for a breakdown you could send film to me get access to our advanced breakdowns and even some cases our advanced drills and be able to set up a zoom call with me with certain membership plans check out that link okay let's get started so main thing we're going to talk about here is how this release what we're trying to set up why we don't just run this out route right now, and we really got to focus on crossing this DB's face to get his hips to turn. So Debo's going to come off the line of scrimmage. He gives this kind of split release, one two, one two to the inside, pushes back up vertical, and gets on this out route, creating a lot of separation. This is a very good route here. Um, so I think the main thing here with this split release is just kind of like to get this DB's feet to stop, right? We want to make him think I'm giving him a split, and then I'm taking off running a drag, coming straight across the middle of the field, running this drag route, right? So he gives this little split right here. Gets this DB to stop his feet, right? Gets him to react and to try to get hands, and then I cross his face, right? And you see when Debo crosses his face here, he's fully committed with his hips, and he's fully committed with my shoulders. Because what a lot of people do on this, this is kind of like a, they call this a dive release. Um, a lot of guys talk, to, think the same thing on like a, like a diamond release, right? So you get a dive and a diamond. A dive is kind of the opposite of a diamond. You're going inside rather than going outside on a diamond. A diamond is where you take three steps to the outside and run a slant underneath this DB's face. Now, now, when we're doing a dive release here, it's very important, just like how on a diamond I need to sell vertical, I need to sell drag or I need to sell inside release. So I need to fully commit my eyes, shoulders, and my hips, right? So when I fully commit like that, I could just put the brakes on, right? He comes off here, split release, right left puts the brakes on now what a lot of people do in this situation here is they're either not running full speed they'll take two choppy steps when you take choppy steps that db's just going to be able to shuffle but because debo's actually running here and taking two full strides putting the brakes on very sudden and you see shoulders are towards the middle of the field. I cannot stress that enough. That's what will get this DB to turn his hips. And if he tries to recover with this outside hand, all we got to be able to do is be physical, have a plan for my hands, get his arm off of me, right? So now another thing too is when guys will split right here, they'll stay square and they'll keep that front, that right shoulder right there a little bit tilted open. And same thing, even if they run, they're still going to be slowing down because they're not fully committing their shoulders. And that DB ain't believing drag. You're not going to run a drag with your inside shoulder open halfway, right? If you fully Fully commit your shoulders, fully commit your hips, commit your eyes, and you're fast to the inside. That's what will get this DB to turn his hips. Now, it's very important right here that I'm tight right around his hip because a lot of guys will do this, and then they bow it around. And then they're not able to get up to the depth of their route as fast as they need to get up to it. We're here, and we got to make sure that I'm nice and tight around it right off of his hip to focus on bursting up to the actual depth and then being able to get out of this route. Okay, that's a great job here by Debo. Let's, break, let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So he gives a split, one, two, gets him to commit those his burst up field breaks off that inside leg and gets it out great route here so now we're going to be talking about this square cut and why we want to attack leverage now again easy thing to say here right is um i think this db personally either way because we decide to go with the square cut is um it, it, it's kind of tough to, it's tough to guard this right it's it's real tough to guard this especially when you're like an off man look outside leverage right you got help to the inside which is the only reason he's going to be playing outside leverage he doesn't mind chasing him across the field because he's probably got linebacker help right so um, I think the main thing here is we want to attack his leverage, right? So he's outside leverage, and I got to run this dig across the field. Now, the reason why I wouldn't just go straight up and then run over the middle is because he's going to be all over my hip, and then I'm not going to create space for myself and create space for my quarterback because we know, based on the alignment of the defense, probably got help to the inside, right? So what does he do? He comes out the line, and he attacks his midline here. So he attacks his midline. Now, the easy thing to say is, okay, but the DB should not backpedal in the end zone. That's, that's a rule of thumb shouldn't backpedal in the end zone but now here's the thing if he stays square right here and he tries to sit and Debo makes this same kind of square cut where he snaps down two three four and he gives this jab well, he actually takes five steps here because he snaps with the outside leg which is fine but if you still make that same move and you give a violent head and shoulder fake the DB still is going to be jumping because he stopped his feet he's sitting down right and he's got to be real disciplined with my hit with 
his eyes on my hips. But if I can sell this move and I'm disciplined with the moves that I make and I'm explosive, I'm quick, I'm not wasting any time at the top of the route, I can create some separation, right? So this DB starts to backpedal mainly because Debo does a great job of attacking his leverage. Now you see when he angles his stem out and attacks leverage, look at all the space he's creating over the middle, right? And you're going to see this linebacker come into the frame, but you've got to see how much space he's creating with just his stem for that quarterback to lace that thing right in that window, right? So now what he does is he calls a square cut. So he snaps down, right? And what that square cut does is that serves as an alert for this DB. Okay, he's going to be making a break. It's very important that this is probably as violent of a snap down or a trigger step, whatever you want to call it, as you could possibly do muster up you want to be as violent as you can because you want to stop because you see how Debo kind of drifts up after it if we could do this snap if we could snap down and really stop in the grass or the turf or it's really stop in the ground obviously you're gonna have a little bit of drift because you're running full speed but when you're really violent and drop that gets a that's a bigger indicator for that DB to want to drive on this thing right so he comes here snap two three four five and you see this just slight head and shoulder fake it's very violent but on a square cut you want to make sure that you want to do this head and shoulder the fake to the opposite direction of where you're going to be breaking, right? So now... The thing is, too, he could have snapped down on this inside leg, too, right? I've seen that done before on a square cut. You snap down with the right leg, then you go two, three, four, and it's one less step, and you throw, same thing. You're making that head and shoulder fake, and you're snapping down on the side of the break. I, that's the way I teach my guys, but I don't want to make it seem so black and white like you must always go on this step. But that's what, that's what I teach my guys to snap with that inside leg, left, right, left, and then we break to the inside. Same kind of idea, though, with the head and shoulder fake, same mechanics apply. Right? And you see how he's not reaching with that cut step. A lot of guys will reach super wide and they open up that toe and they open up their hips. You keep your toes forward. You keep the weight on the inside part of your foot and you're violent with your upper half. It'll get at least a hesitation off this DB, right? Because if we get him on his back foot, that's all that we need. And I'm able to run out and drive out of this thing. And now you're going to see that that linebacker comes into the frame right here, right? But now if he just runs this route straight up and just tries to run this dig, he's got outside leverage. Okay, I'm just going to take it. He doesn't create any separation from himself. And we got to know that it's off man. We got to look at that DB. How's he playing me? Does he have man eyes or does he have zone eyes, right? And that's what we go over to on my site in um, our coverage breakdowns that I talk about, right? We talk about the tendencies of DBs and how they play things like this, right? So that's something that you guys can definitely learn from that. But understanding how they're going to play you, being able to attack your route and understand, have a high IQ. Because again, at this level, everybody's fast. At the college level, everybody's fast. So your IQ route running technique is what's going to get you open. And this is what created a lot of separation for him made that throwing lane or that throwing window for the quarterback a lot bigger. Let's watch it again one more time. So great job here, Debo, attacking his leverage, one, two, three, four, five, and then create some separation for himself. Great route. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at a whip route here. We're just going to talk about how you can get out of a whip route in two steps, right? We've all talked about it before. You want to sell like you're running a slant. You want to sell like you're running a drag, whatever it is. See Keenan Allen do this a lot. But how do you get out of this thing as fast as possible and eliminate wasted steps, right? So you see how when Debo comes off here, right, he breaks one, one, two, and he breaks on it inside leg, right? He kind of stops his feet, comes straight out, right, left, and you break on your inside leg, right? So usually it's probably like you're breaking here. It's like your third step. You're going to go left, right, left, and you're going to break off your third step. He has a unique, this is like a unique, very, a unique route because he's able to stop his feet and just come straight across with the right leg, as you can see, as uh, my bad, as you can see right here with just his right leg, but we want to snap on my inside leg, right? Now, when we snap, we want to try to be as violent as possible with my hips. You see how you can't even see him here, but he drops, right? And now you see in the position when he's out of here, look at his shin angles. Both of his shin angles are on a 45-degree angle because if you could get your shins on a 45-degree angle and you could really push off of this right leg, that leg that hooks around, and run your arms, you're going to be able to get out fast, and you see the low man's going to win, right? Who's lower right here? Debo's a lot lower than this DB, and because he sold this thing with great pad low to the inside, that's what gets this deep – or. That's what gets his DB to overcommit and run with him, right? But now when we snap on that inside leg, it's important that that outside leg hooks around. You see how his right leg, I know it's kind of tough to see here, I'll point it out. His right leg hooks and his toes end up pointing forward. What a lot of people do is they'll be running a whip and their toes will be pointing out here. So that's why they take these extra steps. But you want to be able to snap, 
Hook that right leg around. Get your toes pointing back towards the quarterback. Get your shin angles on a 45 to the outside, and that will shoot you out. So you got to drop violently on that inside leg, leg closest to the quarterback. Violent. Hook the outside leg around. Get your shin angles on a 45 back to the sideline. Push off that inside arch and rip your inside arm, or in this case, his right arm, across your body to get you back out of this thing. Let's watch it again one more time. Great rider by Debo. Let's watch it again. So coming out here, one, two. Out of this break fast, run those arms, get out of this thing. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. I'll um, get back to you as soon as possible. And, again, if you want me to take a look at your film, get access to our advanced breakdowns where we talk about coverages, defensive content, check out that link in the description that says submit your film for a breakdown. I'll see you guys next time.